I'm Linda Elsiegood, founder of the LDN Research Trust. It has been my honour to interview LDN researchers, prescribers, pharmacists and patients from around the world for many conditions. Thank you for joining us. This morning I'm joined by Dr Wei Lu from St George's Hospital in London. Thank you for joining us, Wei. Thanks for inviting me. Now, everybody is really interested in hearing what you have to say after you had your LDN and cancer paper published. What will that mean for people with cancer in years to come? Well, yeah, so our paper that came out earlier this year really just gives us more information as to how low-dose naltrexone can actually have an effect on certain cancer cells. And uh, I suppose the only caution I, I would add is that most of the work that we've performed are in cancer cell lines in the laboratory. But nevertheless, it gives us further clues and further information as to how LDN can actually induce anti-cancer effect. And hopefully, uh, by using these information, it will provide a nice guide um, to drive clinical trials and then hopefully um, approve LDN as, as a treatment for cancer much more formally. Mm -hmm. And could you explain what your findings were? Yeah, so, so what we did, Linda, was we, we, we took a number of cancer cell lines from, from patients uh, which had certain forms of cancer and essentially asked the question, what is it uh, that low-dose naltrexone does um, to these cancer cells that normal doses, so-called conventional doses of naltrexone, uh, we would do on the same cell types. So I suppose the question was comparing the effects of these two different doses of, of naltrexone and trying to understand what it was that LDN was doing to the gene expression profiles that would cause an effect so, so, so much more dramatic in cancer cells. And uh, so, so what we showed was that looking at low-dose naltrexone and its effects on certain categories of genes, uh, we, we, we saw that genes that were involved in cell cycling so, so cell cycle, a cell cycle is essentially a process that drives the way that cancer cells uh, can, can grow. And if you can get hold of these, these cancer cell um, cycle genes, you can actually control the way that cancer cells uh, proliferate. And we showed that low-dose naltrexone was capable of targeting certain genes only responsible for the cell cycle. So that led us to believe that if we would somehow exploit the way that low-dose naltrexone would target these genes specifically, we could get a handle on how cancer would grow. And, 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 and indeed, we showed that by using low-dose naltrexone, you could actually slow down the growth of certain cancer cells um, via its effect on, on these particular proteins. Am I right in thinking that you were able also then to kill the cancer cell? What we also found was because of the, because of the effect on the cell cycle, in, in addition to other effects, Linda, that we showed predominantly on, on proteins that controlled the ability of a cell to undergo cell death, we, we, we showed that we could actually increase the amount of cell killing seen in these cancer cells if we were to use a different type of schedule. Um, the particular schedule that we, we tested was, was what we, we, we termed the recovery phase, and it's a schedule which involves recovery phases. And in these cancer cell lines in, in a laboratory setting, if you were to use um, low-dose naltrexone for, let's say, two days, um, followed up by a, um, a recovery phase where no drug was present at all, what we found, uh, bizarrely, was an increase in cell killing or cell death during the phases of the treatment where there was no drug at all, which is completely bizarre to us. But something um, we, we've, we've seen before with other drugs, such as the cannabinoids, and such as the antimalarial agent, um, artusanate. So it's something that we've seen with, with these biologicals and uh, something that absolutely excited us because um, fundamentally in certain situations, Linda, we, we saw LDN having no effect uh, uh, on, on cancer cells. Um, however, by using this recovery phase, uh, we, we saw a much improved um, level of, of cell killing. In your studies, did you use anything else alongside of LDN or was it purely just LDN? What we also did as well, so we, we, we used um, a, a different, different schedules and uh, we used uh, typical chemotherapy such as gemcitabine. Uh, we, we also used oxaliplatin and something known as cyclophosphamide. And, and these three agents I, I mentioned are drugs that are used in a number of cancer patients. 
and, and they have a proven track record as being good cytotoxic agents as well as just general um, cell cell signaling mediators. And we showed that if you were to combine a low dose naltrexone with, with a number of these other agents, we would see a much improved or a much increased level of, of cell killing, um, which really opens the doors to our, to our thinking that LDN can be combined with a number of different treatments um, to, to, to the benefit of, of cancer patients. So let me just get this straight. The actual trials you did, were they in conjunction with other therapies or was it just the LDN on its own, what you um, discovered for this paper? Yeah, so so in, in this particular paper, um, all the, again, um, I've, I've been getting a number of emails from, 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 from people who who, 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 who have mis misunderstood the data here, and most of the data have been based on 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 lab based um, experiments, mm -hmm. and in, and within the confines of of a petri dish and and, and a culture flask, we, we've combined low dose naltrexone with these other different types of drugs, such as gemcitabine, as I alluded to earlier, mm -hmm. and and within this confined, um, I know. A system, we, we've shown much better increase, as a much uh, much more cell killing, if you were to combine LDN with something like gemcitabine, for instance, compared to low dose naltrexone alone. So that really opens the doors to to our, to our thinking that we can safely combine LDN uh, with other agents to to maximise cell killing. Are there any um, doctors or consultants using LDN in this way so far? That you know of? I, I, I don't, unfortunately. No, no, I don't. Um, I, I, I get I get some some emails every now and again from people who are who are keen to to explore um, this this combination angle, and and it's something to me intuitively. It's something uh, towards which we should progress. Other drugs uh, that, I, that I study, you, you tend to, you tend to look at single agent effects before moving on to combinations, because by understanding the profile of how drugs work, you can kind of like predict um, the best drugs to combine. Um, with, with the drug you're testing. So, for instance, low-dose naltrexone um, in, in our hands increases proteins that regulate the ability of a cancer cell to undergo cell death. And we, we show, in, in, in fact, that uh, a particular protein called called, called BAX, which regulates apoptosis, can be increased if you were to treat um, the cancer cells with LDN. And, and, and to me, it makes it's logical to then use another form of chemotherapy that requires backs to be present. So it's, it's really it's this cooperative, uh, this cooperation between two different drugs that, for me, to, to me anyway, is particularly fascinating and, and shows the most potential. So, so even though people may argue LDN alone may not be um, great. Um, uh, may want to be great in certain situations. If you were to combine them with other drugs, you may get a much improved response, and that's precisely what we need to work out and what we need to get into patients. And what do you see is the way forward now? Yeah, I, I think it's important now to, to, to confirm in clinical trials uh, the, the benefits of LDN in patients with cancer. Um, there's lots of anecdotal evidence, and, and the web is, is swamped with, with, with reports of, of people saying that LDN can help them with regards to, to alleviating cancer symptoms or, or even helping with, with cancer treatment. But what's really required are powerful clinical trials to really, to really knock it on the head and, and to confirm once and for all that there is value in, in in using LDN, and, and once that's that's all been approved and, and and been confirmed, then to move into finding better ways of using LDN. Should we combine LDN with oxaliplatin? Should we use LDN up front and, and as, as a priming agent before we use other forms of of chemotherapy or even immunotherapies? And it's really trying to understand what's the best way we we, we can use this this, this, this compound in a, in a form of LDN, which which in my hands is it's incredibly exciting. It it it, it does things to to cancer cells which 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 other drugs can do and these other drugs have been approved and 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 they're used um quite quite happily but because it's ldn because we're lacking these clinical trials um it, it hasn't been really um been used uh, and, and taken to, to, to the fore which, which i i believe it, it should do mm -hmm. or it should be at least and how easy do you think it would be to initiate these clinical trials um it, it's 
um, clinical trials are, are, are something that unfortunately require a, a lot of money, and, and you need um, clinicians to, to to believe that the actual drug will work. And I, I, I sense that people are beginning to, to see that there is value in LDN, and and uh, I suppose it's like it's like a, it's like a big juggernaut. It's trying to change its direction, and the more people can see, and the, the more people hear and read uh, uh, about LDN, and, and there's now and uh, there's an increase in 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 the, in the scientific uh, literature to to support um LDN um in its use as as a as a cancer therapy people will start to to at least um call for for LDN to be to be put into trials and um, once the money is all in place I, I see no reason why these trials can't go ahead that's really exciting and thank you very much for sharing your experience with us not at all. It's just been my pleasure. Do you have LDN experience to share? If so, please email me, linda at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you.